Hello everyone and welcome to Gregster's Reviews. Today we're reviewing the XFX R9 Fury X. Been long time coming, been waiting for quite a while for this, been lots of leaks, lots of news but no official data from AMD. But finally we get it and confirmed it comes with the AIO cooler which is uh, something I was never a fan of but after using this I'm, I've changed my mind, it's very good. It's equipped with 4096 stream processors. It also comes with 4 gigabytes of HBM, high bandwidth memory, which uh, for those who are not in the know, it's uh, around 60% faster than GDDR5 512-bit bus that we see on the uh, R9 290X, 390X. So uh, plenty of bandwidth there for, for high resolutions. Now people have been touting this card or AMD have been touting this card as the 4K card to have and me being me I'm a little bit clued up and I'm thinking 4 gigabytes no that's never going to work you're going to need at least 6 gigabytes for 4K or Ultra HD but somehow <laughs> I think it's really going to shine at 4K I've only tested it at 1440p so far and yeah it copes fine. There was games like Shadow of Mordor which I'll show you in a bit. I thought it's going to struggle here, it's going to be stuttering and glitching but it hasn't. You know it's uh, it's coped fine. Uh, GTA 5 also I ticked the box that says ignore the uh, limitations and fired up the game. Alright frames weren't that great at 1440p to be fair they weren't that good but it wasn't down to hitching and stuttering it was juddery just because the frames were low so if you've got a couple of these three of these in in crossfire you, you're going to cope quite well at sort of uh, 1440p and above okay so let's get some games on the go everything I've recorded is at 1080p I did use Raptor GVR to record but sadly it doesn't record MSI Afterburner or Fraps so I couldn't show you the frames and I couldn't show you performance basically what's happening and what the temps are so uh, you have to forgive me for that but I've played plenty in 1440p and uh, yeah it's it's been fine so uh, anyway games are recorded at 1080p just to show you everything that's happening on screen and what better way to start than with a Game & Evolve title I believe it's Game & Evolve title anyway uh, Dirt Rally fantastic game plays superbly on the uh, Fury X very impressed with this ultra smooth no problems at all with with frames no hitching or stuttering at all and as you can see uh, performance is very good and while we're watching this I'll uh, tell you what my computer is it's a 3930k quite an old chip now but still does the job nicely and that's running at 4.4 gigahertz 16 gigabytes of a uh, Vexia memory running at 21 33 megahertz uh, Asus Rampage 4 formula motherboard that's all water cooled with a custom loop and a ROG Swift monitor now I had some problems with the Swift and AMD cards and I couldn't get 120 hertz to work properly so uh, I ordered a new lead still no go and finally I ordered one more lead from Ugreen it was a 1.2 volt display port, 2 meters, and it works fine. So a big shout out to you, Green. If anyone's having problems, grab your leads from them. I, uh, buy them from Amazon, easy enough and nice and cheap. So thanks for that. Really appreciate that, and works a treat. So happy me, 120 hertz at 1440p. Another benchmark that's always been demanding is uh, Hitman Absolution. It's always been a toughy, gorgeous looking benchmark game. Not, not too bad. I'm looking forward to the new Hitman game coming out as well. And the Fury cope really well with this at 1080p and 1440p. No problems here whatsoever. Ran very nicely. And as you can see, the benchmark, it looks very nice as well. Going back to what I earlier said about the AIO cooler, AIO cooler, I wasn't a fan of these at all. I've never ever been a fan of these, but because the card is quite a hot card by law, it's a B 
big chip it's got the HBM on there it does need a decent cooler and card arrived I thought oh, I'm not gonna like this I took off one of my fans uh, case fans put the card there uh, put the sorry put the radiator there fired up the computer silence fired up the game silence I, I know there's a few people having problems with uh, with wine on the fan and the pump but I implore you send them back no problems at all and get replacement because my mine is absolutely silent and it's it's turned me into a fan of uh, AIO I, blah, 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 I can't even say it AIO callers so uh, in future I'm, I might start looking for these as a uh, as a purchase it saves all the grief of self water cooling it's obviously not as good but uh, it does save that grief so a massive plus for for the cooler uh, very pleased with that I didn't think I would be but I am right so let's start talking about price I paid 542 for my XFX I had the MSI on order but they weren't due until the 10th of July which is still a week to go as I sit here now so I swapped the order over for the XFX no other reason than my impatience really but yep XFX is in my case I'd rather have had MSI but hey ho my impatience is not very good and I jumped so uh, at £542 it's priced against the GTX 980 Ti Nvidia's card and comparable performance at times so uh, you've got the choice of 4 gigabytes of HBM or 6 gigabytes of GDDR5 I've not seen the uh, 4 gigabytes be a limiting factor at all limiting factor it's coped well in the games I've played at 1440p I've not got a 4k monitor to test sadly I had one but uh, I'd, I fancied the ROG Swift and I haven't got room for another one so uh, I sold that on and bought the uh, ROG Swift but as I say uh, I haven't seen the memory be a limiting factor at all I thought it would be it isn't so again that's a plus now I've done a bit of overclocking on the card I have to say I'm a little bit disappointed it doesn't clock very high obviously there's stop volts at the moment uh, I'm not too sure when and if the, uh, the volts are going to be unlocked but for me I put the card to 1128 I ran 3D Fire Strike it passed that I fired up a game literally two hours ago and uh, Tomb Raider funnily enough I thought I'll show you what the frames were and put it to 1128 it crashed out straight away so I dropped it back to 1120 and it crashed out straight away put it to 1100 and yeah it completed that time and gave me about a 7% performance increase N not too much but 7% so really the card could do with some extra volts but even then I don't think there's going to be a massive overclocker with the size of this, the chip being 600 millimeter squared or close to that something like that it doesn't give a lot of room for overclocking really well, that's just my opinion anyway uh, I don't think you're going to see massive clocking cards but who knows I could be wrong on that and hopefully I will be I'll let you know later on when and if the, the volts are unlocked but for plug and play I'm very happy with the card very pleased with it performance is absolutely fine if I was a 1080p gamer I'd have no issues buying one of these it copes well a few games uh, with the game works effects obviously uh, a little bit questionable we'll say not in a bad way but performance could be a little higher whether that's down to Nvidia's doing or something else I don't know I'm not getting involved in in that argument I've, I've done enough debating on that I'm a big fan of uh, what Gameworks brings to games I do think the effects make the games look good but that's my opinion I've debated this time and time again and I'm not debating it anymore especially not on this channel so uh, yeah that's my opinion and we'll leave it there but as the Fury X goes on normal games non game works games it copes fine it does a great job uh, I'll, I'd recommend it with no issues whatsoever to anyone who's considering buying a AMD card the Fury X I do think it's because of the overclocking which slightly disappointed me I do think it's a little pricey 
I'd like to see it a little cheaper. If it came in at the 450 mark or even 4, 420, 425, I'd certainly recommend it. It's a 980 Ti competitor, so you've got Nvidia or AMD. I think AMD have done a fantastic job with this card. It took them too bloody long, if I'm honest. They should have got it out quicker, and stock was short when they did launch. So that hasn't helped them. I see a lot of people buying the 980 Ti when the the first reviews came out, which I think was a little hasty. And the card does a, does a good job. So uh, yeah, no problems at all recommending this, and I will do to people. Anyway, that's enough about GameWorks. The card's fantastic. Shadow of Mordor, I've, I saw a video a few days ago, and it was stuttering all over the place. I've played this at 1440p, there's been no stuttering at all. Uh, there was a slight stutter when I first started the game, but that's fine. I've, I've had the same on, on the two NVIDIA cards I've had. There's, I wouldn't say it's stuttered, but just it must be loading textures right at the start, and uh, that, that's all there is. But for actual gameplay, you can see here from the video, it's uh, running nicely. I, I ran this at 1440p with the HD pack installed and expecting it to bomb out, expecting to sort of uh, think, oh no, we're uh, we're done, but n not at all. It coped perfectly fine, plays perfectly fine, no issues whatsoever. So again, anyone who's concerned about VRAM, uh, don't be. It's gonna it's gonna cope fine. And I can't see it being an issue at all. But anyway, review's getting on a bit now. Uh, I'm waffling a little bit. And I've not shown enough games. So we'll cut this uh, Shadow of Mordor short here. And we'll put on one more. Which, oddly enough, is going to be Batman Arkham Knight. Just to show you, it does actually run smooth. So uh, keep watching Batman Arkham Knight coming up. I've played Batman at 1440p as well wasn't so smooth with everything maxed out I've got to be honest uh, it's just a case of needing some optimizations I imagine so once uh, AMD do that that'll be fine the the game is quite buggy for other people but for 1080p it, it ran flawless I was uh, ever so impressed I played it for about half an hour not too long but driving around in the Batmobile frames dropped down to sort of uh, mid 40s but it didn't hinder the game at all it still played nicely so yeah, Batman, fine for me, and I'm a big Batman fan. So, to summarise, this is my uh, second AMD card in uh, the last few months. I had a 290X, and uh, I was very impressed with the 290X, to be fair. I gave it a, a very good review, and uh, I'm just as impressed with the Fury X. Very nice card, ultra impressed with the uh, the cooler. That was a good move by a AMD, and uh, yeah... Uh, it's not a Titan X beta by any standard I've got both cards of course I've got the Titan X and I've got the Fury X and I should be doing comparison videos for everyone to see which one does the best sadly my capture card only does 1080p but that'll have to do hopefully a high vis man will sort me out something but for now I'm really really impressed with the, the Fury X it could do with a, a slight price drop. I, I think it's a little too high at the moment, but if it came down to 450, it's going to sell well. It's going to sell very well. So anyone considering an AMD card, look no further. Fury X, get it, enjoy. Games, fantastic. Anyway, end of the review. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. I'm a bit of a NVIDIA fan, as everyone knows, so for me to praise up a AMD card, that tells you straight away it's a good card. Bye for now.